In this video, we'll be talking about the big problem with transactions. The, actually, well, one of the biggest problems with transactions, and that is deadlock. So when you're using a locking scheduler, when you're using the way that you determine whether or not a transaction can proceed or not is to, for them to request locks on the system, there is the possibility of deadlock. What is deadlock? Deadlock occurs when a transaction is waiting for locks to be released, but they're holding locks that other transactions need to continue. So for instance, it means that transaction one needs to lock from transaction two, but transaction two needs to lock from transaction one. How is the system going to proceed? It never will, because neither one will release the locks until it gets the, the lock the other one is holding. This is what's called deadlock. So this can happen quite often, um, especially when you're working with systems where you can get locks on different parts of the database. And so the question becomes, how do we present or prevent and or fix deadlock situations? How do we recognize when they're happening and fix them? Or how do we make sure that they never happen to begin with? So we'll talk about the first thing that I mentioned there. Um, and that is, how do you detect if we're in a deadlock situation? So the way that you do that is you build what's called a wait for graph. A wait for graph is a graph that maps which transactions are waiting for other transactions to release a lock. So if transaction one is waiting for transaction two because transaction two holds a lock that transaction one needs, you draw the graph where transaction one points at transaction two to say, hey, I'm waiting for transaction two to give me its lock. Um, the way that you recognize deadlock in this situation is you look for a cycle in the graph. If transaction one is waiting on transaction two and transaction two is waiting on transaction three and transaction three is waiting on transaction one, you have this cycle. And if you ever have a cycle, then you'll never be able to proceed because you have deadlock. So deadlock is a cycle in the wait for graph. Okay, so let's look at a wait for graph here. So here is a wait for graph where I have transactions one through seven, and I pointed arrows at which transaction is waiting for other transactions. So multiple choice question time, which of these transactions are deadlocked? All right, so one, one that should be pretty easy to recognize is transactions four and seven are not deadlocked. They're not waiting on anybody. They're free to proceed. All right. However, the cycle, there is a deadlock cycle here of T1 is waiting for T3, T3 is waiting for T2, T2 is waiting for T1. We have a deadlock cycle. None of these three transactions will proceed until this deadlock cycle is resolved. However, the other terrible part about this cycle is anybody waiting on any parts of this cycle are also deadlocked. Transactions T5 and T6 are also waiting for this deadlock cycle to get resolved because they can't proceed until T2 can proceed, but T2 can't proceed because it's part of this deadlock cycle. So which transactions here are deadlocked? The second answer here, T1, T2, T3, T5, and T6, all of those are deadlocked because of this um, deadlock cycle between T1, T2, and T3. All right, so we found our deadlocked transactions. How do we fix it? Well, there's really only one thing we can do, and that's roll it back. All right, roll back transactions. But which transactions should you roll back? All right, well, the easy one is you need to roll back one of the transactions in your deadlock cycle, right? That makes sense. Um, and so how do you determine which transactions are in a deadlock cycle? Well, you can either construct this weights for a graph, which is actually a little bit challenging at times. But the other option is, a much simpler solution, is having a timeout to say, if a transaction has been waiting for, I don't know, X number of seconds, roll it back. All right. So, because if you're in a deadlock cycle, you're definitely going to be waiting forever. So you'll definitely wait at least X seconds. And if you waited X seconds, you can roll that guy back. And that is actually often the default way these sorts of things are handled in many different systems, including in SQLite. However, one hard part about this is choosing X is hard. Like, how long are you willing to wait until you're like, you know what, you're probably deadlocked, we should roll you back. Should you wait a second? Well, no, because you could be you could be waiting for other transactions that would finish quite rapidly if they just waited a little bit longer. Should you wait an hour? Well, that means that it would take you an hour before you recognize that there is a deadlock situation going on, and you probably want your transactions to fail before then so that you can you know resubmit or figure out some other way to do what you want to do. Um, so you don't want to wait too long, 
And the other big problem is, is if all you do when you s have a timeout is you say, okay, try again. Well, by having that transaction start again, it could insert itself right into the same spot as before of waiting on one transaction and another transaction waiting on it. And you can have the deadlock situation just arise again when the transaction re-enters and re-begins. So there's two other strategies that actually work quite a bit better than timeout, but they're a little bit harder to implement. One is called the wait die. Now these uh, names are, are a little bit um, 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 forceful, but they help you remember them. So this is one mechanism for deadlock resolution. And so I'm gonna use a little bit of notation here where in each transaction is given a timestamp when it starts, when you run that begin uh, transaction statement. And it's denoted by TS of T of one. So this is like the timestamp of T of one. So timestamps that are smaller than other timestamps are older. They think of the timestamp as you know the number of milliseconds since 1970 or something like that. Okay, so let's presume that transaction I is requesting a lock currently held by transaction J. Transaction I is waiting on transaction J. Okay, so if transaction I is less than transaction J, excuse me, timestamp for I is less than the timestamp for J. This means transaction I is older than transaction J. Now, if once again, if the timestamp being less means it's older isn't clear, I recommend pausing the video here, coming up with some example timestamps. It's something that I'm gonna be using in um, exams and other slides. Make sure you're comfortable with, when I say one timestamp is less than another timestamp, it means the thing that's less is older. So in the white die deadlock resolution, the older transaction, T of I in this case, will wait for the younger transaction, T of J, to finish its work. Because once it finishes its work, then it will relinquish its lock and it can get that. However, if this isn't the case, if it means that transaction I is actually the younger of the two, the transaction I will die, it will abort, it will immediately roll back. Okay, and this means the younger one dies. However, an important caveat here is that when the younger one dies, it restarts, it starts all over again, but it starts with the same timestamp that it had originally. All right, so once again, the way the wait die works is if the transaction that's wanting to get the lock is older, it waits. If the transaction that wants to get the lock is younger, it dies and tries again with the same timestamp. And now how this works might not make a lot of sense, so let's work through an example. So here's transaction one, its timestamp is 10, okay? And it's cranking along, transaction two starts, its transaction start time, its timestamp is 15. And transaction three starts along sometime later, its timestamp is 20, okay? And in the running of these transactions, transaction one needs a lock held by transaction two. Now, transaction one is older than transaction two. Hopefully everybody agrees with that. So what should it do? Should it wait or should it die? Well, because it's older, it should wait. Okay, so it's waiting for its transaction two to work along. Okay, it's waiting. More time goes on. Oh, transaction two needs a lock held by transaction three. Now, is transaction two older or younger than transaction three? It's older. So what does it do? It waits. Okay, tick, 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 tick. More time goes by. Transaction three needs a lock held by transaction one. Is transaction three older or younger? Well, if it was young, if it was older, it would wait, but it's not older. Transaction three is younger than transaction one. So what it should do is not wait. Instead, it should die. And now what it means that when it dies, it means that it is rolled back. It is now starting again. Okay. And so now that transaction three has died, Transaction two doesn't need to wait on transaction three anymore. Transaction two can just proceed on because transaction three, when it rolled back, it gave up all of its locks. So transaction two no longer needs to wait. It's able to proceed onwards and then transaction two finishes and then transaction one is able to finish. So even though we would have gotten a deadlock where T1 needed something held by T2, T2 needed something held by T3, T3 needed something held by T1, because we had this wait die, it means that we didn't allow the cycle to proceed. Okay, so that is how wait die fixes these sorts of waits for deadlock cycles. All right, so that is one mechanism. That's the wait die mechanism. The other one is called wound wait. 
Okay, and it looks very similar to the previous one. Same notation as everything. If the T1 is older than T2, in this case, instead of waiting, what it does is it wounds the younger one. And what it means by saying wounds, it means it basically steals the lock from the, uh, the, the younger transaction, gives the lock to the older. The older one like stabs the younger one and like robs him blind, takes all of his locks and says, hey, younger one, screw you, restart, roll back, try again later. Okay. It's not a very nice way, but you know, um, you can think of it. I- I'm older than many of you. You know, if, if you have things that I want, I just take it from you and say, you know, try being born again. All right. So that is the wound part. However, if the one that's trying to get the new lock is younger, the younger one waits for the older one to finish. All right. So older ones wound younger ones, whereas younger ones wait for the older ones. You know, I actually kind of like this mechanism. Yeah, it's like I could stab you and take everything you want, but if you want something from me, just wait until I die naturally and then you can get it. Okay. However, important caveat here that when the younger one is wounded, when the younger one is killed, it r- roll backs but starts again with the same timestamp. So let's do a wound wait example to kind of see the difference between wound wait and wait die. So we're starting again. Here, let's start with Transaction 3 is the first one that starts. It starts at timestamp 10. And then transaction 2 begins, transaction 1 begins. All right? Note, I'm using different timestamps than the ones before because I want the cycles to go the same. It's it, for a reason. All right? So let's say, pretend transaction 1 finds, oh, you know what? It needs a lock held by transaction 2. So it needs a lock held by transaction 2. Which is transaction 1 younger or older than? <clears throat> is transaction 1 younger or older than transaction 2? It's younger. So what should the younger one do in this example? Younger people wait, okay? So transaction one is waiting on transaction two. Oh, transaction two needs a lock held by transaction three. So it needs to wait on it or it needs to wound it. Now, is transaction two younger than transaction three? Yes, because it's younger, it waits. All right, transaction three needs a lock held by transaction one. Is transaction three younger or older than transaction one? Well, transaction three is actually older than transaction one. So instead of waiting, it should wound. So in order to wound, it would roll back transaction one, bloop. Transaction one is now rolled back and T3 gets the locks from transaction one. And so what this means is transaction three Um, is able to proceed and transaction one is done like transaction one is rolled back and it will re-enter the system and so then transaction three can finish its job and then transaction two can finish its job all right so once again this is a little bit different than the wait wound we'll be talking about the when you would want wait die versus wound wait in a little bit Um, but the important thing is both of these systems resolve these deadlock cycles because every transaction has a um, unique timestamp you are never able you're not able to ever get these cycles because eventually the one of these cycles one of these transactions would be pointing at something that's older or younger which would cause it to kill the um, other one okay so multiple choice question time why is reusing the old timestamp important why can't why when you kill a transaction and it gets rolled back and it re-enters the system why doesn't it just get a fresh timestamp so this is kind of a tricky question it really requires you to work through and draw out some of these weight die and wound weight scenarios to see what happens if you um, add in transactions with their, a new timestamp. The big reason is it's actually the first answer here. All of these systems favor old transactions. They favor letting old transactions proceed to completion through two different types of mechanisms. Um, and what this means is the longer you've been in the system, the longer you've been trying to finish, the more priority you get in order to actually finish. And if every time you got rolled back, you got a new fresh timestamp, you, you started off as the freshest kid on the block, it means you can get, keep getting rolled back over and over and over again, and you're never able to actually complete. You just keep going, I'm waiting for other people to get going. I'm waiting for other people to get going. I keep dying and restarting. However, if you have a system that says, hey, every time you restart, you get your old age, you get the prestige that you used to have, 
it means that eventually you will be the oldest one. Eventually, even if you keep getting rolled back a dozen or a hundred times, you keep getting older and older and older until you are the oldest, meanest, biggest kid on the block and nobody is able to roll you back anymore. And then eventually, because nobody's able to roll you back anymore, you'll be able to finish. You'll be able to actually commit your transaction. And so it's a really easy mistake to make when you're implementing these algorithms, but you need to reuse the old timestamp so that um, when you keep getting rolled back, eventually you'll be able to finish. All right. So with this, let's talk about the kind of comparing these different strategies. So for instance, wait, die, and wound wait, both of those deadlock resolution strategies ensure something called no starvation. So starvation is when objects aren't able to do their work because they're waiting for resources. In this case, the resources are locks. And deadlock is the most extreme form of starvation because it means that multiple people are starving for resources held by the other and neither can proceed at all. All right, so when would you choose wait, die versus wound wait? Well, wait, die tends to roll back more transactions, all right? Because it means younger ones just instantly die. Younger ones just keep coming in, dying, coming in, dying until they're able to get a foothold. Um, and so wait, die tends to roll back more transactions than wound wait, which basically says, hey, younger ones wait on the old ones, but if an older one wants anything you got, then you get killed. So wait, die rolls back more transactions, but to be honest, they tend not to have done too much work. Younger transactions come in, they realize they can't get their locks, try again. They come in, they realize they can't get their locks, try again. Um, whereas it, in wound weight, those older transactions are proceeding along and those younger ones are just sitting there waiting. And if the older one wants something that the younger one does, then the um, um, older one wounds the younger one. And that's the case when you get things rolling back. But it means that those younger transactions, they've been sitting around waiting, doing other work. And when they get rolled back, they probably have done more things. Um, a big plus for wait, die, and wound wait is that they're a lot easier to implement than a weights for graph. So a weights for graph involves tracking all of the transactions that are currently running at a particular point in time and figuring out who they're waiting on and then looking for cycles. And if you have thousands of transactions simultaneously going on with transactions finishing and entering the system all the time, it's very difficult to calculate, um, um, do you have deadlock cycles? And if you have a deadlock cycle, who should be rolled back in order to resolve that cycle? However, one big plus for the weights for graph technique is that it only aborts transactions if there's really a deadlock. So with weight die and wound weight, you can have things rolled back even if there's no deadlock. Um, just because you know you're only lo ever looking at pairs of of transactions, the weights for will only roll back things if they're actually necessary. So which system is best? What well, really once again depends on, for instance, how expensive is it for you to calculate a weights for graph, or how expensive is it to roll back work? Is rollbacks really expensive on a per transaction basis, or is it really expensive based on how much work each transaction has done before it needs to roll back? those sorts of decisions would cause you to choose one of these techniques over the other.